was as if the tumble-down mansion had asked to be left alone and pull the hillside around itself like a tired child gathers up a blanket and falls asleep. And the sleep was deep black and untroubled for decades rain fell on the roof slates paint peeled on the rows of white balustrades of the many balconies under long punishing heat waves starlings made their nests in the chimney tops foxes bore their litters in the corners of bedrooms or in open drawers and wardrobes in the dead hotel shutters half open and hanging from hinges invited ivy to creep in through window panes and cast apple light shadows on the buckling floorboards inside the dead hotel And loose stones in time found their settling place Falling from the overhang of the hillside That casts its shadow on the old hotel To cover croquet lawns And fill statue fountains with silt The same fountains that once trapped the sun rays and cast tiny rainbows in the spray of its babbling cascade. What splendid sea views that these rooms once boasted, what wondrous sunlight the solarium trapped in time for those visitors passing and stopping for a while. Writing postcards in the morning and sipping coffee from bone china cups and falling asleep on the chaise long in the dead hotel. Ah, the same bone china that now lends its scattered chips and shards to the bones of mice or fallen nests and broken twigs that cover tables in the dining halls. Silver carafes filled with leeches and rainwater and great chunks of plaster broken free from the ceiling above. Frog spawn flicks and twitches in the porcelain basins in the dark scullery of the dead hotel. What of the once magnificent flying staircase that now sags and leans and groans under its own magnitude? Carved posts and banisters coiled with weeds and poison ivy and hunting scenes in wood choked and covered by sinews and roots. A lone silver birch pierces the staircase and stretches high and wide its branches and leaves kissed by the occasional sunlight that falls from the skyline high above. And bats, of course, the bats, how they cavort and chase each other at dusk, waking from every corner and chamber, from under stairs and bookcases. 
the tomes scattered asunder, their sagging pages fallen and covered in mold, their pictures and illustrations faded to the limit of recognition. A portrait of a lady in ermine fur and in the stairwell walls glistening with a thin skin of rainwater in the dead hotel. There hangs an art painting of a tall man brandishing a musket over a, a fallen stag, the canvas agleam with the silver lines left by snails and slugs. Oblivious to the masterful brushstrokes they cover with their slime. With their slime. And what of the pavilion on the former lawn? Once a midnight trysting place, what new bile beauty was wooed here? And seduced out of her nightdress, her dark hair covered in sweat, and sticking to her lover's neck as they grind and smack, grind and smack in hurried anguish. Under the spangle of starlight and amid the trickling of fountain water, from stone urns as statuettes stand all watching from the covered arcade. Unfazed by the passion before them, unashamed anyway, by their own half nakedness. Now that same pavilion is home to thorns and wild orchids. Thick nests of caterpillar and thistle and nettle and woodbine and honeysuckle, all those hardy victors of a forgotten walled garden. In the entrance hall, the concierge desk, now covered in soot and dust so deep it could be measured in inches if one was in the mind to measure the depth of dust. All the keys still hanging on hooks on a buckled mahogany cabinet, the numbers still visible on brass key rings dead hotel. All the numbers, sevens and sixes, and twos and fours, double threes and one hundreds, four hundreds and two hundreds and so on. Some still a glimmer, some long since lackluster, but all long since estranged and ultimately divorced from their partner locks and keyholes. And what of the rows of deep cubby holes once used for letters and notes, parcels and gifts, epistolary words written in haste? Some envelopes are still unopened and barely visible through thick veils of cobwebs and house martin and swallow, tawny owl and eagle owl all make their nests here now. The brass numbers above each square hole still legible. 
The humor of house numbers lost on all of them. Their guano piled thick on the parquet floor of their would-be doorstep in the dead hotel. And speaking of birds, what became of them, those tamed peacocks that once strutted here on the mown grass and on the roofs of the pavilion and covered walkways? That rare and prized breed, white albino peacock, all unfurling of tail feathers in a chalk white display of pride and courtship. Well, the ghostly plumes and white feathers still can be seen here and there scattered and suspended in stairwells, half floating in green fish ponds. And speaking of fish, what became of those young golden carp who had also become tame and used to the shadows and silhouettes of the guests at the dead hotel? Hoping for a bready offering, some crouton, some pan au chocolat, perhaps. Always kissed asunder with eager lips and devoured with smacks and splashes. Well, their descendants have since found a home in the quarry, carried along by floodwaters and Overflow, grown to greater girths now and mingling their blood-stained gold in the dark waters. Stained by the earth and by the ashes from all those fires and, and mudslides, all, all the fires and mudslides. But now, today, as if by some kind of trickery, divine or diabolical, seven white peacocks, seven white peacocks have appeared and perched on the wrought iron and weed and tangled gates that lead to the dead hotel. Their cries fill the early morning as the sun rises, as the sun rises on crooked arms.